Okay, my name's Andrew Pai, I'm a, a programmer. Um, I bought, well, I bought a Raspberry Pi and I really didn't have much to do with it, so I thought there was uh, Python. Now, it's a language I never actually knew how to write, and so I thought, right, I'll just a little exercise, I'll uh, have a go at writing something. And after one of the talks that Simon did, he, uh, he was demonstrating the scratch. So I thought, oh, I'll fancy having a quick, I'll see if I could create a scratch interface, like you do. <laughs> So I've got a little video, if, if you can see, I don't know if you can see it. So I've just got me, me Pi, and I've just got me uh, Python interpreter. So eventually, it'll come up, so it kicks in. Star Trek uh, shaking there. So I've basically just done some little graphics, and just to get, basically if you drag them over, it snaps together. Now I did actually write a, a slightly advanced version, so we've got like the loops, so it would actually click in it, but uh, I don't know if it's actually working on this one. <laughs> Eventually. As you can see, it's not brilliantly quick, it's a bit like sluggish, but it, it taught me the basics, <laughs> a bit of graphics, so I used, uh, is it Pygame, to, to, to render the graphics. And yeah, after a little while, I, uh, I found uh, s someone had written something that was similar. Uh, I think it's a Google, part of a Google project. It's called Blocky. And so basically what you do, you run it in a, you can just run it as like a, in a web server. So you can just browse to it on your Pi, and then you can uh, use it to do your, your, your logic effectively. Um, and what it does, it'll actually write Python code. It'll write Java code. So based on this log drawing, it'll actually output some uh, Python or Java. So what I then did is I wrote a little web server that this then sent back the code, and then it just ran it on the Python. The only problem was that you couldn't actually see what it, it was doing. <laughs> um, it, it had it turning on an LED at one point. Uh, later on, I found, um, I don't know if you've used, seen Adafruit's web IDE. So it's basically a similar principle, but you can uh, program, they've got like a web interface that you can talk to on your Python. You can program your, your code and it syncs it up with the GitHub uh, so, uh, source repository. So I did have a go at pinching some of the code <laughs> to try and interface this with their, their code, but unfortunately I didn't quite get to finish that. Uh, I'll show you one other thing that before I finish, uh, boom, 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 if I can find it. Oh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where? Sorry. <laughs> oh. uh, wasn't there, sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. I think I worked a bit of captive sensing. We'll turn the voice because I don't like listening to my voice. <laughs> so basically, I've got a bit of tin foil with some wire, and it's connected to a um, Arduino. So what happens is, the as you get close to it, it, it alter affects the values. So, so this is basically how your phone works. So it's using captive sensing. So as you notice, the value goes up because your body's acting. I think it's. I can't. I don't know the theory behind it. It's something to do with your body acts as a capacitor. So it takes. So what you've got, you've got two pins, and what it's doing is it's timing how long it takes for the signal to get from one pin to the other. And you're by touching, you're affecting the length of time that it takes. So that was just a little project, anyhow. And I did actually have that talking to me, Raspberry Pi. Uh, the picture of a balloon, so as you got close, it made the balloon go up and down. But unfortunately, I've got a video of that. That's great. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>